Hello and welcome to Thought Provoking Tech. I'm Zach and in today's video I'm going to be talking about playing Call of Duty Black Ops 4 and to be a little bit more specific I'm going to be talking about the zombie mode uh, for Black Ops 4. So it's been a little while since I've played Call of Duty. It's definitely not a game I pick up on a yearly basis but because of that the game has a lot of value to me because of all the different unique uh, multiplayer modes. Of course you have the traditional uh, online multiplayer you also have the zombie mode, and then you have the new Battle Royale mode uh, that's definitely inspired by all the Battle Royale games or games that are now adding Battle Royale modes simply because it is such a popular genre right now. Uh, so because of all these different unique modes, there's a lot of value in my opinion, especially if you're not someone that picks it up on a yearly basis. Uh, so the last time I played Zombies, I think, was the second generation of Zombies. I played the first generation that came out with World at War, I believe it was. Uh, we had Nazi, the Nazi zombie mode. I don't know how the game has evolved since then, but when I played it today, it was definitely a nice, fresh experience. The first iteration of zombie was pretty enjoyable, but it's something that kind of got old after time, uh, simply due to uh, not being a lot of stuff to keep it fresh after playing the mode multiple times over and over again. So this is something I think uh, is a little bit better in that regard. It definitely seems like it has something that can keep it fresh simply because you have different characters that you can choose from or different classes and they have different abilities. For example, the character I was playing in today's video had Odin's hammer or Thor's hammer. I don't remember exactly what it's called, but it's like Thor's hammer, of course. Uh, so you get to swat, you hit people with the melee weapon and they go flying lightning effects and it's insanely overpowered. Uh, so when the big baddies come out, you can just go through and just smash them and annihilate those <laughs> very quickly. So it's definitely a fun, enjoyable experience overall. Uh, but to talk more about performance, because that's normally what I focus on in these videos, because I'm not trying to review the game. Uh, I'm trying to give you guys some insight on how this will perform on different cloud gaming platforms. So today's video, of course, is about Shadow, as the video's title implies. And I was able to play the zombie mode with all the quality settings maxed out. Uh, the only thing is motion blur I had on automatic. I didn't turn it on. I didn't turn it off. So it was an automatic. But the quality setting for motion blur was turned all the way up to high. Uh, so, in, in short, the settings were pretty much maxed out to the maximum. I didn't turn motion blur on all the time, simply I just want to leave it on automatic. Uh, it was a very good and very enjoyable experience in terms of the performance. We had, for the most part, right at the 60 FPS mark. We ranged on average mostly from 60 to 70 FPS. Uh, sadly, I didn't get fraps to work with Call of Duty. I don't know what the issue with, is. I don't know if I need to reinstall fraps or if it simply doesn't work with Call of Duty for some reason or another. Uh, but they do have a FPS early that you can turn on. And I did turn it on and I reviewed the video. Uh, because they have a theater mode, you can review what you uh, played, your previous matches. So I reviewed that and actually used that to record the match. So I didn't have to record at the same time. That way uh, the OBS recorder wasn't actually impacting the performance. Uh, because it wasn't recorded at the same time. So with all that being said, very good at performance. Every once in a while I did dip down to the low 50s, uh, but I never saw it really dip below 50, so that was a very good experience overall, especially with a game that's kind of designed with consoles in mind. I don't have the exact details of the sales figures, but I would be very confident in saying that the vast majority of people that play Call of Duty play on consoles. Uh, so with consoles in mind, most of the time you're looking at 60 FPS on the max because most TVs only support 60 uh, Hertz, uh, which is equivalent to 60 FPS. So with all that being said, it, it was definitely a nice, good experience. The latency didn't seem to have any impact on my gameplay. Everything seemed to be nice and fluid. And as I kind of was talking about at the beginning of the video, the experience overall is very enjoyable. So with that being said, I definitely recommend playing Call of Duty Black Ops 4 on Shadow. I have no nothing I can say negatively about it. Everything that I tried doing, I uh, didn't have any issues, so there wasn't any weird control issues. I did play with mouse and keyboard. I didn't try a gamepad. Uh, so if anyone wants that, just leave that in the comments below, and I might just uh, try that and then send a quick tweet out if everything works as I intended it, or everything works as intended by the developer, really. 
So that's pretty much all I have uh, for today's video. I will show some game day clips at the end of this video uh, because I have a lot of footage because we lasted for over an hour. It was a very good experience. We definitely had one player that kind of carried the team. Um, I was second place, but uh, by a de decent margin behind the first place player. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big like. I greatly appreciate that. Also, if you're not already an existing subscriber, make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for more great videos from Top Provoking Tech. Thanks for watching, guys. And until next time, Zach out. But don't stop yet. Here comes some more gameplay footage. Oh. Thanks. <laughs> 